All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the bevel shader. So we're going to get started on this cube here. I just got to make something that we can work on. And uh, it's going to take a moment to do that. But bevel shader is probably one of the most misunderstood tools inside of Blender because it's quite useful, but it also has some pretty hard limitations. So let's go ahead and check those out here. We're going to take a look at how to use it for rendering first, which is where it's going to... Um, be most useful. However, you can also create normal maps with it, which is quite interesting, but it's a little bit more complicated than you probably had originally thought. So we got a shape like this going on now. Okay. And so we're going to go over to, um, oh, you know what, let's, let's go ahead and set some seams for this real quick. This is not a modeling tutorial, just to let you know, I'm just trying to get through this real fast. But um, you will need UV maps because we're going to do some baking. All right. Okay. I don't need leave that open like that. So press J and join those real quick. All right. Go to UV editing. I'm press U unwrap. Nope. U unwrap. There you go. And um, Blender has two methods of unwrapping. Is angle based and conformal. Conformal usually works better for hard surfaces. Just keep that in mind. I'm going to add a little bit of margin here so that way um, it can have some bleed room on the texture map, right? All right, so let's go to shading. The object selected, create a new material. We're going to press Shift A and we're going to do input bevel. I'm going to place that down here. I'm going to plug the normal into the normal. There we go. Now we need to be in cycles, so just change your render, render engine over to cycles here. And uh, we'll go ahead and do a render preview, click in here. Scene light, scene worlds, we don't have any. We're gonna go ahead and turn those off and use an HDRI image. Change it to this one, all right? All right, so it's already taken effect, but we can barely see what's going on because it's too large. So we're gonna go ahead and reduce that. Your value might be different than mine, but I'm gonna use 0 0.05 here. Okay, I'm going to right click Shade Smooth, Normals, Auto Smooth. All right, so this is what I have going on right now. So the bevel shader is most useful for rendering. Believe it or not, it's actually really good for that. And if you're going to create renders with um, some low poly models, kind of like this, I highly recommend always adding a bevel shader to your material uh, if possible. Okay, but you can also bake these onto um, your normal maps, right? Now, this is going to get a little bit tricky, but we're going to have a little bit of fun with it too. So, um, Also, if you have a hard time seeing the effects here, you could turn metallic up to full and uh, maybe just bump your roughness down a little bit. You'll see the highlights a little bit better um, doing this. Okay. Now, this was already unwrapped. We're going to bake onto it. So I'm going to press Shift A, Create Texture, Image Texture. Here we go. Click New. We're going to do twice the resolution of whatever it is you want. So I want a 1024. I'm going to do a 2048. I'm going to name this bake. Okay. I'm just going to click OK there. We have that set up like so. Let's select this object. Go to our render tab. You'll find a bake menu here. We're going to switch it over to normal. Just a reminder if you swap the green value to negative Y, that'll be a DirectX version for a normal map. So if you want to use it somewhere else, you could do that. It should be at least. I believe the default plus Y is. Um, OpenGL version, which is what Blender uses. All right, so this is selected, the object selected. This is already set, ready to go because everything's applied the way it is. Click Bake. And it's just going to be a moment. It's going to take uh, just a moment to uh, bake out that texture into a normal map. When it does, it'll pop up over here on the top left. Now, uh, one of the problems with Blender baking is, well, it's not really that great at baking, first of all. You, you're really better off getting Substance Painter, Substance Designer, or something like a Marmoset tool bag. Marmoset having the best baker of all of them, in my opinion. Uh, Substance Designer has a pretty decent baker, but um, Painters is probably the quickest and easiest to use. So, all right. So now that we bake this out, take a quick look here at these normals. These are all of the hard edges, right? And they get this pretty crazy looking seam thing going on. Okay, and so just pay attention to that. We're gonna get back to it, but also you see how this is very um, pixelated, very sharp edges and stuff everywhere. So this is why you up-res your image when you bake it, because you're going to come into image and resize. You're going to want to down-res it here. 
when you down res an image it's going to cause a dithering effect you'll see it's not perfect but it's a little bit nicer than it was so it'll do that across the whole image uh, we want to save this so we'll go back there save as i'll put it on desktop as normal.png make sure you save it as a 16-bit okay save done now this material we're done with it i'm going to exit out of it i'm going to go ahead and click new press shift a open up a texture or create a texture image texture open up take change it from srgb to non-color this is important otherwise it won't uh, look correct here in blender we press shift a create a vector normal map plug color to color normal to normal okay and we'll switch this from cycles over to material preview so we're back using ev now we can also bump the roughness down a little bit and turn metallic full up so there we go metallic to one and you'll see that this looks actually pretty decent right and so the limitation of this is that uh, you can see there's like a little bit of effect of a bevel going on everywhere but the limitation simply is is that when you start zooming in you're going to start seeing these hard edges okay and these won't go away and there's a reason for that i'm gonna go back to layout real quick press z go back to solid and we take a look at this mesh in edit mode under this drop down you have to be in edit mode you can click on this little icon this is going to show you your split normals. This is what controls your shading. Okay. And when you do an auto smooth, it's the same as shading it flat for the most part, is it's going to create split normals. Um, and it's pulling in light information for this face off of this line here. This one, probably this one. This bottom one, probably that one right there, right? And so um, when it bakes, this is what happens, right? It creates those. Because they're not perfectly aligned with each other, they're not they're not technically using the same lighting information, so it creates those little edges. Uh, it happens to create the illusion of a bevel, which is nice, you know. Go back to material preview, but it's not perfect. Okay, it works a little bit better from further away. So basically, props that are really not that important, they're going to be kind of distant. You're not going to get up close to them or something like that. Might be quite useful. Otherwise. You're probably going to want to go about this a different way okay so let's go back um, into edit mode real quick and so if you're wondering how do you get these combined well you don't use sharp edges so if it was shaded smooth you'd see here this is uh, the result we get so obviously this doesn't work like this but you see that the uh, corners here are pulling in the light information from a unified direction now right which is cool because it's just one vertex normal. All right. So what can you do with the bevel shader now that we got all that out of the way? This is where it gets fun. You know how in a lot of my videos I said you don't really need to use a quad workflow. You can use bevels and all that fun stuff. It's true. You can. However, um, when you're doing uh, low poly meshes here in Blender, especially Blender, the, the thing is, is you really want to make sure your low poly mesh takes care of the shading itself. It doesn't necessarily rely off of anything else, right? So that means more polygons. And for some applications or some uh, games, that's not always possible. But I'm gonna do K, C, use a knife tool. You'll see here as I'm working on this mesh, I'm gonna start converting it more or less into a sub D mesh, but it doesn't have to necessarily subdivide. All right, as I go around and start doing this, I'm going to have to actually mirror it because, oh, you know what, let's just, uh, let's not do that. Got to hit C. C is cut through, so. What I do want to do, though, go around and start cutting this up in a manner where it will uh, shade itself, right? use loop cuts to be quite useful and basically this is more or less like a, a bevel that's not beveled right I think some people call this Korean bevels something like that for some reason so now I can just do a cut through here
when I actually have to mirror this, I didn't realize that. Okay. That goes up to there. So this used to be considered improper back in the day. To me, I think it's proper personally, but because it just allows you to keep your corners sharp, basically. All right. So quad workflow, basically. And right now, uh, I'm going to shade it smooth again. I'm going to mirror it over. Do a mirror modifier, bisect it. Make sure you flip if you need to. And um, this is what we got going on. Okay. So if I apply that mirror, looks okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you'd probably get away with this in like 99% of times, basically, but. That one's probably not needed. Oh, yeah, it is needed. <laughs> it is absolutely needed. I didn't realize it was changing the mesh shape there, so. All right. Okay. So this is all out of the way. If you didn't notice what was just occurring, I did not have to readjust my UVs. I might have messed them up, but yeah, because I did the mirror. And so they're all like half half of UV now. Um, I'm going to re-unwrap. It basically goes almost back to the same position. It's pretty similar. And uh, But I didn't have to add seams or nothing the way I did that. So this is where it gets fun. We're going to go back to the shading tab. I go back to render preview. I'm going to swap the material on this. Back to the um, first one we created, the bake material, if you will. Okay. And here you can see we can adjust the bevel shader even more. So if we wanted to do like a 0 0.01, we can do something like that. Like we could get pretty wild with this thing, actually. Do like a 0 0.2, obviously too much, but maybe like a 0 0.008. A little bit of a weird shading thing going on right there. Make sure auto smooths off. Make sure everything shades smooth. Do AM merge by distance. Make sure nothing nothing's hanging. Might have things marked as sharp by accident. Make sure it clear sharps. And uh, take a look at that again. Okay. No. Just a weird angle there, some kind of like god ray or something with the uh, cycles renderer, potentially. All right, so we can lower this if we wanted. Um, the thing about it now is that you can see we can get some pretty like overall soft stuff going on, but if you lower it below what we did with the model itself, right, you're not going to see really any effect to this. So you actually want to make it a little bit higher than what I modeled. So your softness should come from the bevel, not from necessarily your modeling. Okay. So you can hold those edges in pretty sharp, believe it or not. Like if you wanted to slide these back, you don't want them all the way, but you can slide them pretty far back, basically. What I'm getting at. See that push that up to this side a little bit more. If I push it back this way, it brings it back out this way a little bit more. And so what the bevel shader is actually doing here is it's more or less like a replacement for a high poly mesh, kind of, because your low poly mesh is able to contain itself. It's shading. Um, instead of having to do a subdivision and bake from active element to, uh, or bake from an object to your active element or whatever, now you have this going on. And I think we'll be okay with this. There's a couple questionable things that pop up every now and then. That right there is not quite right. 
Go to solid view real quick. Oh, I didn't put a loop here. So yeah, little things like that can add up. This one might need to go back a little bit. Good balance to them. Let's go back to the render preview. See how it looks now. Looking a little bit better. Okay. I think the, um, the settings might be a little bit off though. 0 0.008 might be better. 0 0.005. Some, somewhere in there, I think we'll get our best results. All right. Yeah, as we go larger with it, not not as well. I think that might just be a little too far out as well. All right. Yeah, so there is a balancing act to this a little bit, but for the most part, you're not going to get a better looking model now that this is kind of set up the way it is, we'll go back to solid. But um, select bake, select model. We can go back to the bake tab. Hit bake. Oh, turn the samples up too. That's a big one. If you didn't see, um, let's go back to render. It might actually be what that was. The samples are at four. Yeah, you turn it up a little bit more. It tightens things up in a nice way. Let's see, less samples. More samples right not not a big difference but it's there you can also plug a normal into this by the way all right okay so with all that out of the way let's go ahead and select the mesh select the texture here and bake we'll do it one more time it's going to bake smaller now because we already resized that image i'm not going to worry about uh, down sampling it just want to get done real quick and you'll notice here that we cannot see hardly any difference at all this normal map is really really faint okay this is actually what you want so if I save this and we swap this material to this one we can just hit alt R to reload this I right, over 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 saved I saved over the old image so it reloads it we do our material preview now okay and you're going to have a hard time getting a better result on a hard surface shape, I think, than this. Okay. The model's doing most of the heavy lifting, and the bevel shader just adds a nice little touch to it. Unfortunately, the answer was you got, uh, the answer you got wasn't exactly what you thought you needed. You end up having to do quad workflow and a lot of manual kind of layout of these edges. But that's about as sharp as it's going to get. Or that amount of low polygons, anyways. All right. Still has a little bit of issues on here, too, huh? Just a little bit right there. I'm going to take a guess that that is from this edge <laughs> not being fully completed. Let's try fixing that. Whenever you run into shading issues, you'll now know what to look for. And, um, so we'll do a image um, resize this forty eight. Okay, let's go ahead and select. The mesh, switch back to the bake material, select the bake, select the mesh, bake it. It'll take just a minute, but all in all, the bevel shader is pretty useful, but it's not probably what you thought it was because unfortunately when you mark things as sharp, it splits the vertex normal. It almost never creates the kind of bake you want. And that's a kind of just a downside of using split vertex normal in my opinion. You'll see a lot of guys do that in their um, tutorials. I highly recommend, if you can, get your mesh, your low poly, just capable of smoothing 
itself out uh, fairly well, not necessarily all the way, um, but holding its, its shading by itself for the most part. And uh, I probably should have downsampled that. Right, let's do it on uh, resize real quick. See if it looks a little bit better this way. Switch it back over to material. We'll just uh, Alt R reload. You'll see it comes in. It says bake every time. I'm not sure why it does that. Yeah. All right. So this is EV, the material preview. So you can turn on ambient occlusion if you want. Set it up a little bit higher. Play around with the distance here if needed. Turn it to 15 for a second. Okay. It's pretty extreme, actually. All right, so all in all, it's about as good as it's going to get. See, when you get up to it up close, still sometimes get a little weird things going on with the shading, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. It's just um, a lot more work involved for this setup like this. And if I was to just simply unplug that normal entirely, you're going to notice something. It's not that much difference, to be honest. It just does look a little bit nicer with that bevel baked into it. All right. Just a tiny bit nicer. All right. That's going to kind of push your models up a little bit higher. I mean, especially if you're looking at it not too close. If you are doing like hero assets or first person weapons or something like that, use more polygons. Don't try to, don't try to skimp around uh, less polygons and get away with things like this, right? This is going to be good for a lot of work that you need to get done quick. But uh, those things that are really taking up a lot of screen space, you really need to spend that extra time on them and just making sure they're just right. Anyways, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed checking it out. I will check you guys out in the next one. All right, take care.